Companies Auditors Report Order 2016 MCQ Question 1 One of your team members has recently qualified as a chartered accountant and joined your team to audit a portfolio of audit clients who are private companies. One of the clients Surrey Private Limited is a hotel in the small town near Jaipur. The revenue generated for the current year ended is as 10.5 crores and the entity are not a holding or subsidiary of any public company. The owner of the business Mr. Hazelwood runs this family business from last 10 years. Your team member is keen to know whether Surrey Private Limited is required to comment on the matter prescribed under CARO 2016. Which of your explanations to him are correct? The entity's revenue exceeds 10 rupees crores. Hence, no need to comment on the matter prescribed under CARO 2016. The entity is not a holding or subsidiary of any public company, hence no need to comment on the matter prescribed under CARO 2016. The entity's revenue for the year is as 10.5 crore which exceed the limit of 10 rupees crore. Hence, the entity has to provide the comment on the matter prescribed under CARO 2016. The entity is not a holding or subsidiary of any public company, hence there is a need to comment on the matter prescribed under CARO 2016. Answer. C. The entity's revenue for the year is as 10.5 crores which exceed the limit of 10 rupees crore. Hence, the entity has to provide the comment on the matter prescribed under CARO 2016. Question 2. Honeywell Limited, a listed company pays its key managerial persons the remuneration in excess of the limits which have been prescribed under 197 of the Companies Act, 2013 without obtaining the necessary approvals from the regulatory authority. In this circumstance, the auditor while reporting under CARO 2016 is required to state Name of the managerial persons to whom the remuneration has been paid in excess of limits and the amount involved. Name of the managerial persons to whom the remuneration in excess of limits is paid and the steps taken by the company for securing refund of the same. The maximum remuneration payable and amount paid in excess of the maximum remuneration to the managerial persons. The amount involved and steps taken by the company for securing the refund of the same. Answer. Option. D. The amount involved and steps taken by the company for securing the refund of the same. Question 3. DCHI Limited is in the business of optics and imaging products. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of Japanese company, DCHJ Limited. DCHI Limited has many expatriates, experts, working in the company whose tenure range from 2 to 5 years. During the course of audit of financial statements of the company, the statutory auditors observed that the company has not been deducting and depositing the TDS, tax deducted at source, on salaries of experts. The auditors assist that the impact of this can be significant as the company has many experts and salary amount is significant. Management explained that tedious on salary of experts would lead to unnecessary hassles to the experts and they serve the company only for a short period. How should the auditors of DCHI Limited deal with this matter? Considering this as a statutory non-compliance, the auditor should look at the significance of the matter and accordingly should report the same in CARO. Considering this as a statutory non-compliance, the auditor should look at the significance of the matter and accordingly should consider reporting this in the main report along with CARO. The auditor should agree to the management's view as the experts are temporary workers and this may not be convenient for the management.
since the matter relates to statutory liability only, the reporting requirements do not arise till the time this becomes disputed. Answer. Option. B. Considering this as a statutory non-compliance, the auditor should look at the significance of the matter and accordingly should consider reporting this in the main report along with Caro. Descriptive question. Question 1. The managing director of the company has committed a teaming and leading fraud. The amount involved has been however subsequently after the year end deposited in the company. As a statutory auditor, how would you deal? Answer. Fraud committed by managing director. The managing director of the company has committed a teaming and leading fraud. The fact that the amount involved has been subsequently deposited after the year end is not important because the auditor is required to perform his responsibilities as laid down in SA 240. The auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud in an audit of financial statements. First of all, as per SA 240, the auditor needs to perform procedures whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement. Because an instance of fraud cannot be considered as an isolated occurrence and it becomes important for the auditor to perform audit procedures and revise the audit risk assessment. Secondly, the auditor needs to consider the impact of fraud on financial statements and its disclosure in the audit report. Thirdly, the auditor should communicate the matter to the chairman and board of directors. Finally, in view of the fact that the fraud has been committed at the highest level of management, it affects the reliability of audit evidence previously obtained since there is a genuine doubt about representations of management. Further, as per Section 143, 12, of the Companies Act 2013, if an auditor of a company, in the course of the performance of his duties as auditor, has reason to believe that an offence involving fraud is being or has been committed against the company by officers or employees of the company, he shall immediately report the matter to the central government, in case amount of fraud is one crore or above, or audit committee or board in other cases, in case the amount of fraud involved is less than 1 crore, within such time and in such manner as may be prescribed. The auditor is also required to report as per clause 10 of paragraph 3 of CARO 2016, whether any fraud by the company or any fraud on the company by its officers or employees has been noticed or reported during the year. If yes, the nature and the amount involved is to be indicated. Question 2. During the financial year ended on 31st March 2018, LM Private Limited had borrowed from a nationalized bank, a term loan of 120 lakhs consisting of 100 lakhs for purchase of a machinery for the new plant and 20 lakhs for erection expenses. As on the date of 31st March 2018, the total of capital and free reserves of the company was 50 lakhs and turnover for the year 2017 to 18 was 750 lakhs. The bank paid 100 lakhs to the vendor of the company for the supply of machinery on 31st December 2017. The machinery had reached the yard of the company. On 28 February 2018, the company had drawn the balance of loan with 20 rupees lakhs to the credit of its current account maintained with the bank and utilized the full amount for renovating its administrative office building. The machinery had been kept as capital stock under construction. Comment as to reporting issues, if any that the auditor should be concerned with for the financial year ended on 31st March 2018, in this respect. Answer. 
applicability of CARO 2016 and utilization of term loan. CARO 2016 specifically exempts a private limited company, not being a subsidiary company or holding company of a public company, having paid up capital, reserves and surplus not more than rupees 1 crore as on balance sheet date. Total borrowing from any bank or financial institution not exceeding rupees 1 crore at any point of time during the year. And Total revenue as disclosed in Schedule 3 to the Companies Act 2013 not exceeding 10 rupees crore during the financial year as per financial statements. In the case of LM Private Limited, it has paid up capital of rupees 50 lakhs which is below the specified limit of rupees 1 crore and turnover is rupees 7.5 crore which is also less than specified rupees 10 crore. However, there is total borrowing is rupees 1.20 crore which is more than the specified limits of rupees 1 crore. Hence CARO 2016 will be applicable to LM Private Limited. As per clause 9 of Para 3 of CARO 2016, an auditor needs to state in his report that whether the term loans were applied for the purpose for which the loans were obtained. If not, the details together with delays or default and subsequent rectification, if any, as may be applicable, be reported. For this the auditor should examine the terms and conditions subject to which the company has obtained the term loans. The auditor may also examine the proposal for grant of loan made to the bank. Normally, the end use of the funds raised by term loans is mentioned in the sanction letter or documents containing the terms and conditions of the loan. The auditor should obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence regarding the utilization of the amounts raised. If the auditor finds that the funds have not been utilized for the purpose for which they were obtained, the auditor's report should state the fact. In the present case, the term loan obtained by LM Private Limited amounting rupees 20 lakhs have not been utilized for erection expenses instead it's utilized for renovating its administrative office building. Further, assuming that erection work has not been done and machinery is not being installed, disclosure of the same as capital stock under construction is in order. Here. The auditor should report the fact in his report that pending utilization of the term loan for erection expenses, the funds were temporarily used for the purpose other than the purpose for which the loan was sanctioned as per clause 9 of Para 3 of CARO 2016. Question 3. Asta Private Limited has fully paid capital of 140 lakhs during the year. The company had borrowed 15 lakhs each from a bank and a financial institution. It had the turnover, net of GST 50 lakhs which is credited to a separate account, of 475 lakhs. Will company's auditor's report order 2016 be applicable to Asta Private Limited? Answer. Applicability of CARO 2016. The CARO 2016 specifically exempts a private limited company, not being a subsidiary or holding company of a public company, having paid up capital and reserves and surplus not more than rupees 1 crore as on the balance sheet date. Total borrowings from any bank or financial institution not exceeding rupees 1 crore at any point of time during the financial year, and Total revenue as disclosed in Schedule 3 to the Companies Act, 2013, including revenue from discontinuing operations, not exceeding rupees 10 crore during the financial year as per the financial statements. In the case of Asta Private Limited, it has outstanding loan of 30 lakhs, 15 lakhs plus 15 lakhs, 
collectively from bank and financial institution which is less than 1 crore rupees and turnover is 475 lakhs i.e. also less than 10 crores and not exceeding the limit. However, it has paid capital of 140 lakhs i.e. more than 1 crore. Thus, considering its paid up capital which is exceeding the prescribed limit for exemption, Caro 2016 will be applicable to Asta Private Limited. Question 4. Under Caro 2016, as a statutory auditor, how would you report on the following? A term loan was obtained from a bank for 80 lakhs for acquiring R&D equipment, out of which 15 lakh was used to buy a car for use of the R&D director. Answer. Utilization of term loans, according to Clause 9 of Para 3 of Caro 2016, the auditor is required to report whether term loans were applied for the purposes for which those were obtained. If not, the amount of loan so diverted and the purpose for which it is used may be reported. The auditor should examine the terms and conditions of the term loan with the actual utilization of the loans. If the auditor finds that the fund has not been utilized for the purpose for which they were obtained, the report should state the fact. In the instant case, term loan taken for the purpose of R&D equipment has been utilized for the purchase of car which has no relation with R&D equipment. Therefore, car the used for R&D director cannot be considered as R&D equipment. Hence, the auditor should state the fact in his report as per paragraph 3 clause 9 of the Caro 2016 that out of the term loan taken for R&D equipment, 15 lakhs was not utilized for the intended purpose of acquiring R&D equipment. Question 5 under Caro 2016, as a statutory auditor, how would you report on the following? Physical verification of only 40% of items of inventory has been conducted by the company. The balanced 60% will be conducted in next year due to lack of time and resources. Answer. Physical verification of inventory, as per clause 2. Of Para 3 of Caro 2016, the auditor is required to report on whether physical verification of inventory has been conducted at reasonable intervals by the management. Physical verification of inventory is the responsibility of the management which should normally verify all material items at least once in a year and more often in appropriate cases. The auditor in order to satisfy himself about verification at reasonable intervals should examine the adequacy of evidence and record of verification. In the given case, the above requirement of CARO 2016 has not been fulfilled as such and the auditor should point out the specific areas where he believes the procedure of inventory verification is not reasonable. He may consider the impact on financial statement and report accordingly. Question 6. T Private Limited's paid up capital and reserves are less than 50 lakhs and it has no outstanding loan exceeding 25 lakhs from any bank or financial institution. Its sales are 6 crores before deducting trade discount 10 lakhs and sales returns 95 lakhs. The services rendered by the company amounted to 10 lakhs. The company contends that reporting under company's auditor's reports order, CARO, is not applicable. Discuss. Applicability of CARO 2016. The CARO 2016 specifically exempts a private limited company, not being a subsidiary or holding company of a public company, having paid up capital and reserves and surplus not more than rupees 1 crore as on the balance sheet date. 
total borrowings from any bank or financial institution not exceeding rupees 1 crore at any point of time during the financial year and total revenue as disclosed in schedule 3 to the companies act 2013 including revenue from discontinuing operations not exceeding rupees 10 crore during the financial year as per the financial statements in the given case paid up capital and reserves of t private limited are less than 1 crore and has no loan outstanding exceeding 1 crore from any bank or financial institution further its total revenue as disclosed in Schedule 3 to the Companies Act, 2013, including revenue from discontinuing operations, is not exceeding Rs 10 crore during the financial year as per the financial statements. Thus, CARO will not be applicable to T Private Limited. Question 7. What are the reporting requirements in the audit report under the Companies Act 2013 CARO 2016 for the following situations? A fraud has been committed against the company by a vendor of the company. The company has committed a major fraud on its customer and the case is pending in the court. Answer Reporting requirements in the audit report under the Companies Act 2013 CARO 2016, according to clause, Kist Smiley of Para 3 of CARO 2016, the auditor is required to report whether any fraud by the company or any fraud on the company has been noticed or reported during the year. If yes, the nature and the amount involved is to be indicated. Further, whether any report under Section 143, 12, of the Companies Act has been filed by the auditors in Form ADT 4 as prescribed under Rule 13 of Companies, Audit and Auditors, Rules, 2014 with the Central Government. As per Section 143, 12, of the Companies Act, 2013, if an auditor of a company, in the course of the performance of his duties as auditor, has reason to believe that an offense involving fraud is being or has been committed against the company by officers or employees of the company, he shall immediately report the matter to the central government, in case amount of fraud is rupees 1 crore or above, or audit committee or board in other cases, in case the amount of fraud involved is less than rupees 1 crore within such time and in such manner as may be prescribed a fraud has been committed against the company by a vendor of the company in case employees or management are involved in fraud committed by vendor reporting has to be done in accordance with caro 2016 and as per section 143 12 of the Companies Act 2013 Suspected fraud by vendors, customers and other third parties should be dealt with in accordance with SA 240. Therefore, reporting has to be done in accordance with SA 240. The auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud in an audit of financial statements. The company has committed a major fraud on its customer and the case is pending in the court. Company has committed major fraud on its customer of which case is pending in the court. Major fraud committed by the company on its customer has to be reported in accordance with clause 11 of para 3 of CARO 2016.